Hey, hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. This is Brad Cartwright with Econ Course Companion, and today we are going to take a look at monopolies versus perfect competition, the advantages and disadvantages of both market structures. This is something that you are going to have to do throughout Theory of the Firm, is take the current market structure that you're studying, which in this case is monopoly, and compare it to perfect competition. In this video, we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of both monopoly and perfect competition. Remember, both of these market structures are at the extremes, right? Perfect competition is perfectly competitive. Monopoly is one firm operating in the entire industry. All right, so let's take a look at this now. All right, so the way that we're going to get there is to take a look first at the industry's supply and demand curve in perfect competition. If you remember back to your studies of perfect competition, in order to show all of the cost, revenues, and profit of a firm, you must first account for where this price came from, where P came from. And where it came from is the industry supply, supply, and demand curve, okay? So here it is. Now, think about this, and this is gonna be very important on the next slide. You see this supply curve? This is the supply curve for the entire industry of whatever product that we are talking about. In perfect competition, right, this supply curve would be representative of the supply of all things produced in this industry. And of course, this firm would be operating in this industry. Okay. Now, another thing, what this represents actually is a cost curve for the industry. So this is the supply curve, but it's also a cost curve. Why? Because what this says is that in the industry, as it produces more level of output, right, it is naturally going to cost more to do it because you're going to need more resources, more land, labor, capital to produce it. So if this industry wants to produce this level of output, the cost to do so would be that. If it wants to produce this level of output, the cost to do so would be that, okay? The other thing to remember, and this is just a reminder, is that remember supply curves are actually curved. <laughs> They're not actually straight, right? It's very easy to forget that, and it's going to be important. That was a terrible drawing. It's going to be important to do that, um, important to, to note that in the next slide. But I just want to say, like, you know this from the beginnings of your studies of microeconomics. Like, this is a curve, but we just conveniently draw it straight, okay? So this is a curve. All right, so what I want you to realize is that this supply curve right here is the cost curve for the entire industry of whatever product we are producing. Hold on to that thought. All right, so we're going to take a look at the advantages of monopoly in this slide. But... What you have to do, and this is a really well-drawn diagram, this one, by Jocelyn Blink and her course companion. But one of the things that you really have to take into account is where this supply curve comes from. Because what she says is like, okay, this is the supply curve in perfect competition. And it's like, how? And then you look at this again, and you're like, wait a minute. Okay, this is the marginal cost curve. So wait a minute. This is the demand and average revenue curve. This is the marginal revenue curve, which should be extended down below zero. And then we come back, because we're a monopoly, we get this, and here is the MC, the marginal cost curve. We get that. And the question is like, how did Jocelyn Blink get it to draw the industry supply curve in perfect competition, first of all, like that, and on the same curve? That doesn't make sense. What I'm telling you is it makes perfect sense. Because even though she drew this curved, what the industry supply curve and perfect competition is, is this curve here, right? And it's just drawn a little bit differently. Okay. So that's important to realize where this curve comes from. Okay, cool. So the advantages of a monopoly are that it could possibly be better for society for there to be a monopoly in certain cases than for there to be perfect competition. Why on earth would that be so? Well, an economist would say because monopolies have the advantage of economies of scale. And because a, 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 a monopoly has the advantage of economies of scale, then that means that it could produce the good at a lower price at a lower cost and therefore sell it at a lower price than if it were in perfect competition. 
That's pretty interesting to think about, right? Remember, in perfect competition, we're talking about a lot of really small firms who basically have no, not basically, they have no power over the, even the price of their product, right? They're price takers. So none of them have the ability to take advantage of economies of scale. But if you're talking about a monopoly, then the cost curve of a monopoly, remember, is in analogous to the industry's cost curve for that industry. If there's only, because basically a monopoly is there's just one firm in the whole industry. So the marginal cost curve of an industry is the monopolistic marginal cost curve. And what, what, what economists would say is there, there, it's possible that a monopoly would be more advantageous to society than perfect competition that because of the economies of scale, because of what's built into that, bulk buying, specialization, blah, 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 that actually the, a, a, a market functioning as a monopoly would produce a profit maximizing level of output, which is where M marginal revenue equals um, marginal cost. At this level of output, the price for society would be there, P2. Well, that price level is lower than where the industry supply curve check it, crosses the demand curve. Because this is the demand curve for the industry, and this is the same demand curve. So the price in perfect competition is going to be at the intersection of supply and demand. That's how price takers get their, their price. So in perfect competition, the price would be up here. And so there is an advantage in the monopoly if of the, of the industry being monopolistic as opposed to perfect competition, if, 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 it's possible that a monopoly could benefit from its economies of scale. That is what is one of the advantages of having a monopoly over perfect competition. The other one is and could be that monopolies, because of their ability to acquire abnormal profits, whereas in perfect competition in the long run, there are hardly ever, there are no perfect, there are no abnormal profits. Because a monopoly can earn abnormal profits, they would be able to invest more money in research and development. And as a result of benefit, as a result of being able to um, invest more in research and development, right, in the long run, this would benefit consumers who would have better products and more choice, okay? So economies of scale is one advantage, possible advantage of monopoly over perfect competition, and also the ability to have abnormal profits could lead to an increase in research and development in that industry. All right, now let's take a look at the disadvantages of monopoly um, over perfect competition. Well, guess what, my friends? This one's kind of easy because the disadvantage is if the monopoly can't take advantage of, <laughs> can't take advantage of the um, economies of scale, then guess what? Well, then their cost curves would merge, right? So remember, this is the cost curve, the industry cost curve of perfect competition. And if the monopoly can't take advantage of that, then guess what? The two curves, remember there was a curve, right? Right here, right? The two curves would merge together. And because there would no longer be any sort of... Um, uh, economies of scale, then the two cost curves would merge and therefore supply would equal the marginal cost curve under perfect competition, okay? So the couple other things to think about in terms of disadvantages of monopoly in comparison with perfect competition is that it's often considered sort of, quote, unfair of the high profits of, um, of monopolies, right? As opposed to in competitive markets. Like that's one of the things that people... Um, that sort of bothers people about monopolies is that they're not really selling at a price that would be most advantageous, of course, for um, society as a whole. No, they're trying to make as much money as possible, which, by the way, is like the point and in, in the theory behind everything that we study is the profit maximizing, right? Um, the other thing is that monopolies are not productively and allocatively efficient. They're just not, right? Um, the, the, in the perfect competition, there's perfect uh, allocative and productive efficiency at the, mo at the point where they uh, acquire normal profits, okay? Um, the other thing is that, of course, a monopoly can charge a higher price for lower output, 
and they can exercise anti-competitive behavior. You know, monopolies are big and strong, and they're the they they have the ability to push other people out of the market just by their very existence. And dominance can do that. Okay, so there's some there's some real disadvantages of monopoly. Um, it's not productively and allocatively efficient. They can charge a higher price for low output. Of course, um, they can have anti-competitive behavior. Those high profits might be um, seen as a negative thing in society. Okay, so there are more disadvantages for society as a whole um, of having a monopoly over having perfect competition, which kind of makes sense. I mean, that's kind of what we anticipate, right, when it comes to uh, monopoly, that they're, because they're the one big firm and they're interested in maximizing their profits, that there's going to be some disadvantages to society as a whole. However, as we just mentioned, there could be, if they can take advantage of economies of scale and if they were to reinvest their abnormal profits into research and development, there could be advantages to having a monopoly. All right, my friends, cool. Listen, you got this, right? If this didn't make sense to you, go back and watch again. If there's something that I didn't, meant, that I didn't say as clearly as possible because it was in a previous video, that's the point of Econ Course Companion. It is here for your entire journey through IB economics, both as you're learning the information the first time and also as a study resource uh, when you get ready to take the IB exam at the end of your two-year course of study. All right, my friends, be cool out there. Congratulations on understanding all that there is to understand in IB economics about monopolies. You got this. Believe in yourselves. Be good to yourselves. Be kind to others. I hope this was helpful. We'll talk to you in a bit.